From Arkansas's breaking news leader, Fox 16 News at 9 starts now. New numbers out tonight showing Little Rock police officers responding to calls much faster compared to the previous couple of years. Fox 16 examining those numbers for you tonight. Good evening, I'm Kevin Kelly. Thanks for joining us. From the time someone calls 911 to when the officer finally gets on the scene, Data shows several minutes shaved off in response time, especially over the last two years. Fox 16's Mitch McCoy in studio tonight, taking a closer look at those stats. Mitch. Yeah, Kevin, good evening. Little Rock police say there have been several changes throughout the department that are contributing to faster, better numbers. Tonight, those numbers show and prove officers across the city are getting to calls more quickly. New numbers show Little Rock police officers are making significant strides in responding to calls. Being data-led, we know where our numbers are showing that we're having more disturbances, uh, more shots fired, things of that number. From the time someone calls 911 to that information being sent to officers is faster. For non-priority calls like traffic or noise complaints, it took on average in 2017 across the city about 15 minutes for those calls to be sent to officers. Now it's about nine. Officers are getting to those scenes faster once they get the call. Citywide, it took about seven minutes in 2017. That's reduced to about six minutes. Our crime analysts will review those numbers and see if we need to be in different areas or uh, call load situations. And that kind of helps uh, whenever an officer is assigned to the district, that keeps them closer in that proximity to those calls. LRPD officer Eric Barnes credits several things for the improved numbers. He says one big factor, there are more officers on the streets. Whenever we switch to 12-hour shifts, it puts more bodies on the street. And as we continue to recruit and have more classes, it definitely puts more bodies on the street. And in return, it gives us more cars and more people in those areas to be able to lower those times. It takes the city's Northwest Division longer to get to calls than other areas like Southwest or the 12th Street divisions. LRPD says that's because Northwest is so large, they, can, they say that they could actually put the entire city of North Little Rock into that Northwest Division. And Kevin, when you take on that Northwest Division size, you also have to take in traffic congestion. They say when you have those big box stores, you have Chanel Parkway, you yeah. have uh, Cantrell Highway 10 out in that area. Traffic, it just takes longer for officers to get to non-priority calls. It certainly does. Obviously, some improvements, very good news, especially for those in need. But obviously, certain calls take certain priorities depending Absolutely. on how it comes in. So how does that play into this? Right. So we were talking about non-priority calls, so traffic complaint, um, noise complaint, things like that. But if there's a shooting, if there's a robbery, if there's uh, you know something with a gun involved, if it's a life or death situation, these officers will get there within two or three minutes, maybe four max. But they'll take precedence even in trying to get that information to officers. So if there's a shooting call that comes in, you'll have somebody stand up and say, hey, shooting at this location, and that information is being directly relayed to the dispatcher and the officer, so it speeds up the entire process. Yeah, it goes to the top of the list as a top priority. Yeah. Yeah. Good news. All right. Thanks, Mitch. Now, weather to plan your day with meteorologist Hayden Nix. For nearly all of this Friday, we've been talking about showers and thunderstorms across the natural state, but the biggest concentration of it happened earlier today across far northwestern Arkansas, where there's been a continual flow of moisture and thunderstorms being generated there. But we are seeing things quiet down, even though we have a couple more thunderstorms developing right now, not near as numerous as we had earlier today. You can see the heaviest activity is just east of the Little Rock just right there along Interstate 40 near Carlisle, even getting a few lightning strikes. And if you live west of there or east of there, north or south, you could probably look and see a little bit of lightning show happening in the atmosphere from that system, creating a good downpour. But you can see showers generating once again off towards the Boston Mountains there. There's a reason behind that. We are expecting another round of showers to redevelop later on tonight, mainly after midnight. So even though you see stars right now in the moon, temperatures dropping down to the mid 70s, that will be changing with Morning time thunderstorms tomorrow and lightning expected. So if you do any type of morning time runs, just be mindful of that with 90 degrees for high temperature by tomorrow afternoon as we're expecting those thunderstorms to dwindle down. But after the rainfall wraps up tomorrow, the bigger story after that is the heat and the humidity. It really cranks up to the hottest readings that we likely have felt this entire summer, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. It's not going to be long lasting, but certainly something that will make an impact. And we're going to talk more about those numbers and how tomorrow will play out in just a little bit. Kevin?
A breaking news update. We're getting our first look tonight at the man police say walked into a Springfield Walmart wearing body armor and carrying tactical weapons. Missouri police are charging Dimitri Andrechenko with making a terrorist threat. Authorities say he had more than 100 rounds of ammunition with him. No shots were fired. A quick thinking store manager pulled a fire alarm urging shoppers to evacuate. A former firefighter who had a gun of his own held the suspect until police arrived. And I walked up to the grass and asked him if he was the male inside and he stated yes and I drew my weapon. Told him to put his hands in the air. He complied. Hopefully my actions prevented something like El Paso from happening. A former firefighter says he didn't know if the armed man was ready to inflict pain or if it was just a protest. No one was injured during that ordeal. Walmart is removing violent video game displays after two recent shootings in its stores. Store officials say the move is meant to show respect for the incidents. It does not change what games are available for sale. Walmart stores will also stop showing violent movies on TV screens in the electronics department and hunting videos in the sporting goods section. It's all part of the store, or I should say that's the part of the store where guns and ammunition are typically sold. Walmart, by the way, is one of the world's largest sellers of guns and ammunition. Its policies on those sales remain unchanged. A Little Rock man in jail this evening after police say he left his baby in a hot car. Police arrested Mohanad Ali. It happened yesterday at the Goodwill parking lot off Markham Park Drive. The baby was taken to Children's Hospital after first responders got to the scene. We don't know her condition at this time, but when EMS evaluated the five-month-old, her body temperature was 102. Police say a woman called 911 after hearing the baby crying from inside the car. How? Honestly, how? How could you leave your baby? How do you not know that you did not take your baby out of the car? Nationwide, there have been 30 hot car child deaths so far this year. Charges are filed against a man who deputies say shot a three-year-old boy in Searcy County. 64-year-old Tom Wyatt, the man you see here, is now facing charges of aggravated assault and battery. He's being held at the Searcy County Jail on a $45,000 bond. The three-year-old was identified by family as Cole Hancock. He's been released from the hospital and is home recovering after a bullet grazed his head. Time now for a health alert. A popular hot springs bathhouse is back open after a health scare that forced them to shut down. Turns out it was all a mistake. Fox 16, Susan El Corey has been following this story from the start. She joins us live. Susan, we know the health department was testing for a potentially dangerous bacteria, so what changed in this entire process? Well, Kevin, this scare was all over Legionella bacteria, which the state health department reported finding inside several pools at the Quapaw Bass and Spa. But new testing shows that was a false positive, which means the water was always okay for people to be around. The spa now dealing with damage control. These pools were just refilled today since they were all drained and cleaned for the past week. Now, Legionella is common in water, but if it's breathed in, can sometimes cause respiratory issues. That's why the state says it didn't want to take any chances after that first round of test results. The spa owner tells me they have strict cleaning policies, so he was surprised this ever came up. We, we just simply did not know how it could have happened. We shut down every week and clean. We disinfect weekly. And, and it's, it just doesn't seem possible that we could have a bacterial growth. In the 12 years they've been in business, the spa says they've never had a health scare before. And the health department also thought there was Legionella bacteria in an outdoor fountain that's run by the National Park Service that also tested out as a false positive here. Well, I tell you what, that's got to be quite the scare for the owner, thinking we've done everything we possibly can, only to find out that that was the case, that nothing was there that could have harmed the public. Yeah. yeah, and he says that's one of the things. He's just been trying to field calls from customers and reassure them it was all okay the whole time. Yeah, like you said, damage control now. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, Susan. Well, fired, but fighting back. An ousted Jefferson County Jail supervisor thinks she should still have her job. The supervisor, whose name is not being released at this time, says she's one of two jailers fired in connection to a recent jail outbreak. Or, excuse me, jailbreak. The sheriff's office claims the jailers did not report the escape of two inmates until almost a day after knowing they were gone. An appeal hearing is set for next Thursday where she can bring a witness to help argue her case. 
On the heels of two mass shootings, the president now calling on Congress to take action. What he believes can be accomplished when it comes to background checks for those purchasing guns and how the NRA is responding. Well, after 45 years, it's very difficult to make it, uh, figure out what I'm going to be doing. After years of distinguished military service, he's moving on to his next mission. How the adjutant general for the Arkansas National Guard is spending his last days and what he will miss most. Fox 16 News continues in about three minutes. Please stay with us. You're watching Fox 16 News at 9 with Donna Terrell, Kevin Kelly, Sports with Wes Moore, and Chief Meteorologist Jeff Baskin. This is Fox 16 News at 9. I've got to throw it away. Thank you. Fox 16's Rebecca Jeffrey is live in Little Rock. Kevin and Donna, details are still coming in, but Little Rock... He did that at Baptist Hospital. Stand by. Kevin and Donna, please.